Hello, my name is Barkley Trimble, Superintendent of Mammoth Cave National Park. Welcome to this video presentation of the Development Concept Plan and Environmental Assessment for the Houghtons Ferry site within the park. We are providing this summary in lieu of a public meeting in order to safeguard public health during the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. The plan itself can be found on the National Park Service's Planning, Environment, and Public Comment website. We will provide more details on assessing the document at the end of this presentation, along with information on how you can provide us with your comments on the plan. We hope you will comment on the document if you have thoughts or ideas that you think we should consider. Here's an overview of the presentation. We will begin by going over the planning schedule. We will then outline some of the issues that the plan is attempting to address and describe the purpose of the plan and why the plan is needed. The heart of the presentation is a summary of two alternative approaches for achieving the National Park Service's desired conditions at the Houghtons Ferry site. Special emphasis is placed on our preferred alternative. We will close by asking for your comments on the plan and describing how you can get your comments to us. Here's a look at the key steps we have taken in the planning process so far. Public outreach on the plan occurred in June and July of 2018, including a public open house to request input into the scope of the plan, including ideas for solutions. There were approximately 72 attendees at this meeting. During the public outreach period, 48 public comments were submitted. Many commenters mentioned that they were in favor of a pedestrian bridge to connect the north and the south sides of the river. Most comments focused on the south side with the majority favoring a balance between offering both day use and camping facilities. There were several comments suggesting some level of improvements on the north side such as camping and picnicking. Following up the June and July 2018 outreach, the concepts and visitor use components of the plan were refined and an outside firm was commissioned to do additional design work. We are currently at the public review stage of the process. After analyzing public comments and revising the EA as appropriate, the EA will be complete in the fall of this year. Please note that implementation of the preferred alternative depends on future funding and securing necessary permits for the actual construction. The Houchin Ferry site currently consists of a four acre site situated on a narrow bluff on the south side of the Green River at mile marker 185.2, together with a one acre site on the north side of the river. Existing south side facilities include a small primitive campground, a large picnic shelter, and river access ramps on both sides that do not reach the water. All of this infrastructure is aged and needs improvements. A number of issues have given rise to the Houchins Ferry Development Concept Plan. In particular, there is a pressing need to reestablish Houchins Ferry as a viable access point to the river. The river access ramps are now high and dry due to the breach and subsequent removal of Lock and Dam 6 in 2016 and 2017, respectively. The breach of the lock and dam caused a river elevation drop of approximately 8 to 10 feet overnight. Both the north and south side concrete ramps at Houghton's Ferry no longer reach the river during lower river levels. Lock and Dam 5 is slated for removal as well in the future, which will result in a projected loss of an additional 3 to 5 feet of river elevation. The park has installed a temporary canoe kayak access launch on the south side of the river until a permanent solution can be installed, although this crude rock launch often gets covered in silt. Outside the park, there are only two locations for takeout. One is at the Lock 6 site, which has not yet been fully developed, and the other is at the Brownsville boat ramp. At the same time, emergency response in law enforcement at the Green River is very difficult and time consuming. The only way to access the river is at the Green River Ferry Crossing Area, located 12 river miles upstream from the Houchins Ferry site, or further downriver at the Brownsville Boat Ramp. Under some river conditions, the Brownsville Boat Ramp is not a feasible option because of low water near the Lock and Dam 6 site. 
Besides river access, other facility upgrades are needed as well at the Houchins Ferry site. The campground and picnic area are generally in deficient condition and both are inadequate to meet the growing demand for recreational opportunities at the west end of the park. Recent years have seen an increased demand for campground improvements at the Houchins Ferry site, along with some level of interest in having recreational facilities on the north side of the river. Given these issues, the purpose of the plan is to reestablish Houchins Ferry as a destination site dedicated to both day use and overnight user groups with a variety of recreational activities. The plan is needed to address deficient facilities presently located at the site and to re-establish safe river access on both sides of the river. The picture on the left of this slide shows the south side access ramp at high water. The picture on the right shows more typical conditions for park visitors when the ramp fails to reach the water's edge with silt covering the temporary launch. Before turning to the alternatives in the plan, I will first describe the principal features of the Houchins Ferry site for those who may not be familiar with it. I will present a series of slides proceeding generally west to east from the campground to the picnic area. The present slide shows a view of the campground from the far west end of the site. The view is looking east in the direction of the picnic area. The Green River is barely visible on the far left. This slide shows the gravel road leading east from the campground to the picnic area. The picnic area is at the rear of the picture. Note the large picnic shelter located on the far right. The river is on the left. This picture shows a large shelter at the picnic area. The road to the left leads down to the south side river access ramp, and the only entry road to the site is located just to the right. This slide shows the road to the south side access ramp with the river in the background. The road is closed to vehicles, but canoers and kayakers can walk down the ramp to put in at the river. I will now turn the presentation over to Mark Kinzer, a planner in our regional planning office, who will describe the elements of the development concept plan for Hudson's Ferry. Thank you, Barkley. I would like to start by looking at the desired future conditions for the Houchin Ferry site. Desired conditions are aspirational statements that describe the resource conditions, visitor experiences, and facilities and services that the National Park Service will strive to achieve and maintain in a particular area. These statements help park managers answer the question, what are we trying to achieve? Desired conditions focus on the park's fundamental resources and values, the visitor experience opportunities associated with those values, and the types and levels of management, development, and access that would be appropriate in a particular location. As shown in this slide, desired conditions for visitor experience, natural resources, and cultural resources are central elements of this plan. Speaking generally, the desired condition for the visitor experience at Houchin Ferry is one where visitors have the opportunity to experience high quality year-round recreation in a natural, tranquil setting. The setting provides opportunities for a visitor experience that is more immersive than at some other parts of the park, one where natural sounds prevail. Visitor density would be much lower here than at Mammoth Cave Campground. The desired condition for natural and cultural resources is one reflecting sustained protection of these resources. This condition would be achieved by siting facilities in areas that can support intensive recreational use. With desired conditions in mind, the planning team considered three different alternatives. Alternative A, no action, continue current management. Alternative B, balance day and overnight use with moderate facility improvements. And alternative C, balance day and overnight use with enhanced facility improvements. I will discuss these alternatives in more detail in a moment. We heard some ideas from the public that we chose not to include as elements of the alternatives. Principal among these were the following. A ramp for motorized boats. The only way to accommodate motorized boats in the steep Houchin Ferry topography 
is to excavate long, deeply incised ramp structures. The environmental and aesthetic impacts are considered too high to proceed with this option. A vehicular ferry. Similar to ramps for boats, the impacts for ferry ramps are unacceptable. Also, the cost of maintaining a vehicular ferry is not justified by prior use figures. Moreover, it takes about the same time to drive around via the Nolan Dam. A vehicular bridge, including low water crossing. The National Park Service hired a contractor to investigate this option, but the costs were too high and the environmental impacts too great for a bridge to be considered a feasible option. The following actions are common to both alternatives B and C, the action alternatives. A canoe kayak launch on the north and south side, as well as a livery parking standing area on the south side. A boat railing system on the south side to allow for launching an NPS emergency response vessel for incidents along the river. Portable toilets on the south side some accessible facilities, including accessible campsites, walkways, picnic spots, and overlooks. Potable water on the south side. We turn now to a description of the individual alternatives. Alternative A is the so-called no action alternative, meaning that the National Park Service would continue its current management approach at the site. The current level of facilities, Campsites, picnic tables, group shelter would be maintained on the south side. There would be no permanent canoe kayak launch extending to the water's edge. And there would be no facilities on the north side of the river. The current state of the north side is shown in the picture on this slide. This is a drawing of what the site would look like under the no action alternative. The campground is on the bottom left in the trees. The picnic area with the large group shelter is on the right. The road to the former ferry ramp is in the middle. All of these facilities would remain unchanged in the no action alternative. There would be no facilities on the north side. Alternative B would balance day and overnight use at the site while adding some moderate facility improvements. On the south side, this alternative would add a campground host, an emergency boat launch for law enforcement and administrative use, steps to the river, a canoe kayak launch, and an overlook. On the north side, there would be a small canoe kayak launch, primitive riverside camping, a simple turnaround, and an overlook. There would also be other minor improvements on both sides of the river. The cost of this alternative is estimated at $3.8 million, not including an additional 30 to 35 percent for planning, design, construction management, etc. This slide shows a drawing of the Houchin Ferry area as developed under Alternative B. Note in particular the expanded parking area on the south side that serves the expanded picnic area and the canoe kayak launch. The new Riverside camping area is visible on the north. Alternative C is the National Park Service preferred alternative. It would balance day and overnight use at the site while adding a greater number of facility improvements than Alternative B. On the south side, the campground would be reconfigured to include eight tent pads and four spaces for recreational vehicles 20 feet long or less. Picnic tables would increase to eight, with additional tables to be provided in an accessible group shelter. Parking spaces for cars would increase from 12 to 25. There would be six spaces for trailers and a staging loop for commercial canoe kayak companies. Steps would be built to the river's edge and there would be an accessible trail to an overlook. A concrete canoe kayak launch would be built at the river's edge. The south side would be connected to the north side by a pedestrian suspension bridge over the Green River. 
Improvements to the north side would include a primitive riverside camping area serving the Green River National Water Trail. There would be six to nine tent pads, three to five of which would be reservable. There would also be three to four picnic tables, all of them accessible. Additional facilities on the north side would include two public parking spaces, a simple turnaround, large enough for trailers, a small canoe kayak launch, walking paths, and an accessible trail to an overlook. This slide shows a drawing of the Houchin Ferry area as developed under Alternative C. The design is similar to Alternative B, but there is a greater number of camping and picnicking opportunities, as well as more parking. The location of the proposed pedestrian bridge is shown in red. Alternative C has been identified as the National Park Service preferred alternative because of existing and anticipated demand for recreational facilities at the Houchin Ferry site. The cost of this alternative is estimated at $5.7 million, not including an additional 30 to 35 percent for planning, design, construction management, etc. The development concept plan for Houchin Ferry includes an environmental assessment to evaluate impacts to the human environment as required by the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA. The environmental assessment for this plan looks at impacts to soils, vegetation, wetlands and floodplain, visitor use and experience, public health and safety, and socioeconomics. The assessment finds that adverse impacts to the physical environment from this plan would be minor. Impacts to visitor use and experience, public health and safety, and socioeconomics would be beneficial. Working within the NEPA guidelines, we continue to seek opportunities for public participation throughout the planning process. We invite you to read the full plan and provide us with your comments. You can provide comments online at parkplanning.nps.gov slash Houchin Ferry and select open for comment. Online comments are preferred. However, written comments will be accepted and should be sent to Mammoth Cave National Park, Attention Houchin Ferry Development Concept Plan, P.O. Box 7, Mammoth Cave, Kentucky, 42259-0007. Comments will be accepted through June 30, 2020. Thank you for viewing this summary of the Houchin Ferry Development Concept Plan and Environmental Assessment. We look forward to hearing from you on this and future planning efforts at Mammoth Cave National Park.